Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Guillermo Amaral joins me. We're going to be talking about Peewick, a safe and open source alternative to Google Analytics. Keep your data on your own machines. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E. FLY.com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Guillermo Amaral. Episode 366, recorded December 8th, 2015. Hewick. This episode is brought to you by DigitalOcean, simple and fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit DigitalOcean.com, and once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code FLOSS in the billing section for a $10 credit. And by Drobo, a family of safe and expandable yet simple-to-use storage arrays. Drobos are designed to protect your important data forever. Visit Drobo.com slash Twit and use the code TWIT100 to save $100 off a of Drobo Mini, Drobo 4Bay, or Drobo 5N. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, libre, open source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, bringing you each week the movers, the shakers, the big projects, little projects, projects you may be using every day and not realizing it, or at least t- touching projects every day without realizing, like today's project probably will be. We'll get to find more about that in a few minutes. Uh, joining me today again is Guillermo Amaral. Guillermo, welcome back to the show. Hey, Randall. How's it going? Going pretty good, going pretty good. And for those watching the video, they, you can see that I'm in that wonderful place where the sun comes right up over my shoulder in beautiful downtown Santa Monica ZipRecruiter. This will be the last time you see this view, though, because we're moving on. We're moving on. We're going to go. Um, uh, the, the company is uh, leaving this floor as of like uh, two or three weeks from now. So I'll have to find a, yet another taping place at ZipRecruiter early on Tuesday mornings to be able to do this show. Um, this is also a very special show. Before we talk about who the guest is, it's a very special show. As you heard in the opening, this is show number 366 of Floss Weekly. Can you believe it? Been doing this for like nine years now. It's just, we're up to 366. What's special about 366, of course, is just the number of days in a leap year. So starting January, 1st, 2016, you can go back to episode one of Floss, and you, if you listen to a show every single day, all the way through 2016, this show will be the show you're listening to on December 31st of next year. Isn't that pretty amazing, Guillermo? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know, it's, it's time quite... and calendar is exciting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Sorry, then... my cat keeps jumping on the desk. I'm trying to keep it out. <laughs> We do enough shows to fill the Mayan calendar. I think it'll be even more interesting. But anyway, this show is not about calendars, not this week in calendars. This show is actually about open source software. Today's uh, guest is going to be talking about um, Pewik, which is uh, analytics software, uh, similar to and most often compared with something like Google Analytics. A lot of you probably have websites where you've put little par- markers in each page to be able to tell how people are flowing through the uh, the system. And then you go to Google's site uh, to figure out and do all the, the analytics. Technically, that's what the word is. So uh, this is an open source thing that you can host yourself. And the reason that's important is for people that are concerned about privacy, because think about it for a second. If you have these little tags, these little bugs on every one of your uh, uh, tracking bugs, not bugs like bug software. Uh, if you have this on every one of your pages, then Google knows how to, uh, you, you know, where people are going around in your sites. And they know this for millions of sites. Uh, so by running Pewik, you can run it on your own platform. You can also uh, host it through them as well. They have a professional side to that that I can see. And um, what do you know about this so far, Camo? Uh Well, I have used Google Analytics before. I haven't used uh, Pewik at all. So I'm 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 kind of excited to see if I can replace my analytics on on a couple of my sites uh, to Pewik at some point. Uh, I just want to see what they have. Well, I, I'll keep my questions for them later on because I know we're, we don't have that many today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, well, it's pretty good there. So, uh, and I don't have much more to say, except I have a very important message to deliver, because whether you're an experienced code warrior or just getting started, you'll need flexible, reliable, and affordable hosting. DigitalOcean provides developers with droplets, which are virtual private servers that can be customized and deployed quickly to host websites, web apps, production applications, personal projects, virtual desktops, and almost anything else you can think of with full root access. I myself have been a DigitalOcean customer since last year's, or 
this year's, I guess, scale, um, when I found out that they were hosting FreeBSD, and I went, okay, great, finally somebody who gets me, finally somebody who runs the operating system I want to run, run in the clouds. Uh, DigitalOcean is built for developers and is used by over 400,000 of them, including me. You can choose your OS, Ubuntu, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, CoreOS, and FreeBSD. There's mine. All the servers are built on hex core machines with dedicated ECC RAM and RAID SSD storage. The servers can have up to 20 CPUs, 64 gigs of RAM, and 640 gigs of SSD hard drive space. Uh, highly scalable to meet the demands of a rapidly growing application or business. And you can deploy servers in regions all over the world with gigabit speeds and 99.99% .99 uptime. Very extensive active community with large detailed set of tutorials on all the ways you can use your droplet. Want to deploy Docker? Set up a mail server? They have you covered. And it's so easy to get started. You can deploy an SSD cloud server in as little as 55 seconds. DigitalOcean has incredibly affordable and straightforward pricing. Servers start at only $5 a month. That's cheap. There's also hourly pricing available starting at less than a penny per hour. But we're going to make it so you can get started today and deploy an SSD cloud server for free. Visit DigitalOcean.com and create an account. Once you confirm your email and account information, go to the billing section and enter the promo code FLOSS for a free $10 credit. That's plenty to get started and explore what DigitalOcean can do. That's DigitalOcean.com. And once you sign up, enter the code FLOSS in the billing section for a $10 credit. And we thank DigitalOcean for their sponsorship of Floss Weekly. Now let's go ahead and bring on our guest, uh, Matthias, Matthias Aubrey, or something close to that. How, how did I do? <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you guys. Um, yes, Matthew is the okay. French version of Matthew. Okay. Matthew, you. Okay, great. Uh, welcome to the show. And uh, uh, I gave sort of my view of what I think Pewik's about, but uh, why don't you tell me how did Pewik get started and uh, and what what problem is it solving? Yeah, so basically about more than 10 years ago, actually, I was building small websites at school for school projects. And my friends were doing that as well. And we were basically wanting to have statistics for those websites. Um, and Back in the days, there were already many products doing that, but most of them, you, when you use them, you had to put uh, somehow an icon on your page that says, oh, this website is measured by this product. And we didn't want to spoil our beautiful pages with these icons somehow. And yeah, it was also for me um, an opportunity to have um, to start a first open source project and basically yeah I was working on this called PHP my visits uh, and um, for the next few years I was working on this uh, as well as you know studying and everything and I learned a, I made a lot of mistakes with this project and I was learning programming as well gaining experience and then something happened in 2005 so 10 years ago that uh, Google bought Urchin. Urchin was the most, one of the biggest um, web analytics software providers. And when they purchased it, uh, you know, it was clear that Google was going to make something big out of it. Um, and this is what happened, I think, um, a year after or less, uh, is that they released Google Analytics which is a free analytics software that, yeah, as you described, um, is used by a lot of people. And basically it became clear that, you know, analytics was going to be so important for the world because people want to measure what they are doing and they want to see the evolution over time, uh, how they, they are doing. And um, that uh, I was, also, yeah, becoming more and more interested in free software and the philosophy of yeah, data privacy and keeping control. And it was for me obvious that the world would need a platform that you can uh, collect your data and keep control and also um, easily export the data, easily import any, any kind of data. And um, so then with my experience from this previous project that uh, and then I started, I decided to start from scratch and yeah, create P week. And um, this was about eight years ago now. And um, I've been full time on the project for about six years or so. And uh, what did you select the name P week? Yes, I was brainstorming for a name at the very, yeah, the first week or so. 
Um, and um, I had a few ideas was that, yeah, with the first project, one of the errors I made was the naming. It was a very long name and uh, very hard to pronounce, hard to spell. So the name needed to be short, uh, easy to pronounce for all kinds of um, cultures. And also with the domain names available. Um, and so I was brainstorming lots of names and I was using the word kind of Kiwi as inspiration when looking for names. And um, yeah, it's quite funny because I was using the word Kiwi and now I live in New Zealand where people are called Kiwis. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know that back in the days. I didn't know I was going to live in New Zealand. Or almost never heard of it before, so this was funny. But um, yeah, so just quite random brainstorming process. Probably took me two, three hours to find it. Um, and the main challenge was to find the domain names, actually. Yeah, all the good ones are taken, definitely. And he also wanted to make sure it wasn't a word that was um, not uniquely Googleable, too. So that's, that's, and I'm pretty sure Pee Wee has pretty good uh, Google sense there. It used to have zero results, and uh, now there are yeah many. So, uh, um, so okay, yeah, Google Analytics, of course, is, are the big guys, and everybody and their brother uses them. But I understand you have a pretty good market uh, distribution, market penetration as well. Yes, definitely. Um, over the last uh, years, it's basically grown pretty much steadily. And today, there are there is about two percent of the internet that use an analytics tool that use PeeWeek. Um, this represents about 1 million websites in the world. And we have about 300,000 unique PeeWeek users that are using the software. And um, it's, yeah, it's, too comp it's, it's for us a huge achievement, it's amazing, and we are so happy and excited about the possibilities. But it's to be compared with the Google Analytics market share, which is that, yeah, eighty percent, actually eighty-two percent of all websites that use an analytics tool use Google Analytics. So, uh, about yeah, four out of five times that you visit a website that is not a Google website, you are still tracked by, by them. And um, yeah, this is just for me incredible what the. the the level of monopoly that they have in, in basically every aspect, you know, search, analytics, uh, advertising, emails, and maps, and all that. It's just fascinating. So, really, what we can, what I'm trying, what we are trying to do is to provide a great alternative to, to that, um, for everyone to enjoy, as well as then innovate and, and find new ideas um, of how we can do things different and, um, yeah. Um, Peewick is yeah, popular and, um, yeah, it's also translated in 54 languages. So this is very nice to know that people everywhere can use it. And um, we are always um, looking for ideas on how we could grow further. And um, this is the, we are trying to listen to our users and um, yeah, creates an exciting future um, to maintain such a growth and, you know, we are looking up to projects like WordPress uh, that are so incredibly popular, so it shows that it's possible. And um, yeah, we are just exciting to even have more websites liberate their data with PeeWeek in the future. That's great. You know, I'm, I left out a traditional question I usually ask the, at the beginning of the show with each guest. Where are you speaking to us from? Yes, I'm based in Wellington, New Zealand. So New Zealand is next to Australia, and it's about the exact opposite of the world from Europe, from France, where I'm from originally. And um, yeah, so I'm speaking from Wellington, and the sun is just uh, slowly will come up in the next uh, hour or so. Uh, it's I think 5 a.m. Yeah. Wow! Wow, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty uh, late. Early. In the, did you stay up or did you get up early? No, I got up early, and uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's yeah, not okay. often that I get up this early. Now, do most people uh, host this themselves, or do they count on cloud solutions, or or what's the breakdown like? 
Um, so we don't really know the exact breakdown because we don't track our own users. We just know how many there are, but um, what we can say is that um, there is definitely a huge mix of ways to install and use PeeWeek, but most people have um, almost downloaded the software and then put it, put it on their existing um, server that they may have had or buy a new one especially for PeeWee, upload it there and um, um, so, so most people are doing it the older way because our user base and people using PeeWeek are webmasters or um, companies who have existing websites or mobile apps and so they have already servers and um, it's it's been the main um, user base so far but i can see that there is more and more people using it using one click installs so many yeah web hosting providers are providing you know dozens of popular apps as a one click install and peewick is one of them so this is also a big way and now we, for example, with uh, our company Peewick Pro, the official Peewick company, we are also providing Peewick Cloud Service. So this is a new way of, of using Peewick as well. And um, yeah, we try to make it as easy as possible to, to download and install. And hopefully we can find even more ways to make it easier because it's still, you know, a bit cumbersome, like compared to, well, the cloud is easy to use. It's just a sign up form and in a few minutes it's ready. Um, but if you are not using the cloud, it may be a bit complicated to get started. So definitely there are ways to, to improve as well. Um, and, um, yeah, I was watching actually your show, your show with um, OnCloud, and uh, I, I know that OnCloud has slightly easier way to install their platform. So we we'll consider that for sure. And, uh, now, now, what does someone see when they're when after they've installed this? I imagine there's graphs and charts and things like that. Yes. Yeah, so PeeWeek is an um, analytics dashboard. So the purpose is to measure how you your users or visitors or clients are using your website or apps. So yeah, by putting a little JavaScript code, any kind of code, you then collect your data and then going to the dashboard, you see uh, graphs and table reports and real time updating data, um, you know, visitor maps and this uh, gives you an overview of who are the people using your products, your website, and how are they spending the time on their website, on your website. Um, what are they most interested in? Um, how long do they spend on each page? Uh, where in the page do they click? Um, which kind of browser they are using? Which operating system? And how did they find your website? You know, did they use Google search or did they click on a link in an email or on another website? Or did they yeah, directly type your website? Um, there are more than 60 or so reports by default. And it's, we aim to try to keep it simple to make things look uh, easy to read and analyze and so yeah PeeWeek is um, what you see is um, an analytics dashboard and then you have access to an administration panel where you can configure your website your users and install new plugins um, and do many other things like manage privacy for your platform. Uh, um, we are big on privacy and offering all kinds of features to protect the privacy of your users. And um, yeah, what you see, what you see also has has changed a bit over the last few years. We've redesigned it a few times, and really our goal is to yeah make the app really simple, easy to consume the data. 
and we hope in the future to show to show you the insight you know so that Pewik helps you get the answers um, more let's say easily even I think uh, there will be a lot of innovation in this field for sure over the next few years and we'll do our best to follow and to keep innovating to make people wow when they connect you know because many people use Pewik every day or every week and um, it's really an important tool for, for them to get the, their job done to improve themselves and what they do and measure in general and um, yeah it's a great really responsibility to get, try to give people insight into what they are doing and help them measure and, and so on. Uh, we have a question from the uh, chat room actually Sandman is asking if ad blockers would probably block that code I'm guessing it, it probably has to do with the uh, URL, right? Yes, so we have um, a long history of uh, things with ad blockers. Um, definitely, ad blockers are designed to block ads and analytic services and all kind of uh, data gathering tools. And for a long time, they didn't block Pweek uh, while they were blocking the others, but on and off, they have been blocking us. We are contacting them to try to get it unblocked because you know Pweek being a decentralized analytics service it's not a case where our data is collected by one corporation or an advertising company and they are you know mismatching or crossing this data with thousands of websites in our case this each Pweek user has their own copy and their own data and you cannot cross match the data um, ad blockers are um, these days quite often blocking Pweek um, and there are actually ways that you can work around that which uh, we have documented somehow somewhere um, so you can rename the files and, and everything but yeah this is a fact and it's um, yeah, recent actually in the last version we've had this issue that the ad blocker was also blocking the the dashboard right from showing uh, the statistics and everything and it was unclear so we've worked on uh, a notification that says oh you may be using an ad blocker so yes it's uh, but you know um i think it's still a minority definitely of people using ad blockers and it's a fact every yeah, data gathering software has to take into account. I've, I've actually seen that happen with uh, Google Analytics too. Uh, uh, if you try and use their like video dashboard uh, and you have an ad blocker, it'll block that and you don't know what's going on, right? So it's good mm -hmm. that you found a, um, a nice way to uh, tell the user that it's probably getting something's going wrong because it's getting blocked, right? Um, yeah. It was a JavaScript uh, trick to try and detect when the content was only partially loaded. So it's uh, what we do, I think, is yeah, we set some kind of element as uh, invisible. And then at the very end of when all JavaScript are loaded, the last thing is to yeah, either hide this thing or yeah, and it took a few hours to find a solution. It was actually we looked online, nobody almost explained how to do this so it was an interesting trick. trick. It, it seems we have a, a flutter in the uh, chat room today. <laughs> we don't usually get that many questions uh, you know uh, at, in rapid succession. Uh, Web904 wants to ask if uh, are there heat maps? So I'm guessing that's well you, you could probably also explain what heat maps are. You, you mm -hmm. know more than me. Yeah so heat maps is um, and over, so imagine you can see your website and on top of your website you would have an overlay of how where people click with their mouse where they move their mouse and where they clicked and a heat map is called this way because it shows heat as in uh, it's a color scale from blue to um, red or yellow and showing the intensity of how many people clicked in which area and 
We do not offer this feature in the core platform yet. Uh, it would be very nice. Uh, but the cool thing is that there is a plugin on the marketplace that you can use. So it's not um, you know, very well maintained and very complicated. But if you just need very basic heat map, it may work well for you. So we have that. And uh, you know, going after features is uh, something we've done for years. And uh, that we've been adding new features and new features. And um, it's just an uh, amazing scope that there are yeah, so many things that we could be doing and picking, staying focused to our vision and um, is key. And this is not the most important thing for us, let's say, um, but it's a beautiful idea. And the, uh, our goal is to enable people to innovate on top of PeeWee so that someone could build a heat map feature and offer it as a plugin on the marketplace, uh, as a free plugin, and later on, hopefully, we, we will provide um, paid plugins as well. But our goal is to pro create the platform and make it really easy for developers to innovate on top of it. And um, so, we uh, have already <laughs> a plugin on the marketplace, right? But the idea would be that even there could be another heat map plugin in the future, even better. And this would be a, a thriving uh, a platform when these things happen more and more. Uh, go, going back to the uh, previous question, you you mentioned that uh, you were trying to get away, uh, well, not not get away with, but I mean, uh, you were trying to contact uh, you know AdBlocker services. So in this case, in this case, plugins. Uh, to to assure them that you are not sharing data like Google does in this case, like uh, uh, collating data from all these websites, right, and using that for other purposes. Uh, what if somebody wanted to do that? Let's say Randall here has like ten websites and on different hosts, and he wants to host different instances of uh, PWIC. Uh, would there be an, uh, a way to uh, I don't know unite or collate all that data into something uh, bigger? I mean, so if Randall uh, wanted to do that, most likely, what if he wants to track, for example, ten of his websites, you would actually use usually one PWIC and track the ten websites into this one PWIC, and this is actually the almost the same case as tracking the website in ten different PWIC in terms of privacy, because um, what we do is um, every user visiting your website is um, assigned a unique identifier and this unique identifier has a, is a hash of several um, variables and one of the components of this hash is um, a random ID for this PWIC website in this PWIC server here. So it's like by default, you cannot cross-match those user ideas across installations. Um, they will be different because we have this visitor hash that is built uh, using the URL of the PWIC server, all these things. Um, it used to be for years that, yes, if you had, like, if someone accessed, uh, like, uh, was hacking into many PWIC, then he could easily or more easily, at least, uh, merge this data. But um, we've improved this like yeah, two years ago or something to yeah, to be more private. To um, one of our goals is really we have a few key objectives with PWIC and to provide you know a, a nice user experience um, and. Yeah, one of our value is uh, security, of course, keep the data secure, keep the code secure. Uh, we have security reviews. And the other big one is privacy. So um, we care a lot about finding all ways that we can improve the security and privacy of your data. And uh, of letting, making it hard or impossible for attackers or hack, um, crackers to um, correlate 
different PWIC is definitely one of the many things that we've worked on uh, to improve that. Well, you know, there's a lot of questions coming out of the chat room, but uh, I'm going to take the to take charge of the microphone for a couple of minutes because I have a very important message to bring you. Because we're excited to welcome Drobo back to the Twit Networks, and they're a sponsor of this episode. Digital data is essential to our lives. Drobo is a safe, simple, and expandable solution for all your storage needs. Drobo offers a family of external storage arrays. You can order them preloaded with storage or add your own drives. I personally have been an owner of both the 4-bay USB drive when it first came out. I upgraded to the 4-bay FireWire drive, and that's been running continuously for like, I don't know, five years now. It's just been perfect for me. It's been working really well. If you're looking for a network-attached storage solution, either as a local backup solution or to use as a server, you should check out the new Drobo 5N. It's simple to use. Getting started is as easy as plugging it into your switch or router. Apps that you backup data to two different cloud service providers or sync via BitTorrent Sync. And it includes a quad-core ARM processor. Three of these cores are available to run Linux. There are tools for developers, including a full LAMP stack, Node.js, and WordPress. It also supports C, C++, Go, Perl, yay Perl, Python, and Ruby, as well as Git to host your own repo. Drobos are also great if you work with video, photos, or want to set up your own media server. Drobos are reliable. Data received by your Drobo and not yet written to disk is protected if there's a sudden power loss. Even better, Drobos have an internal eUSB drive where data is copied if there's a power failure to protect against long outages. Expandable. Add or replace drives in your Drobo with ease. No tools required. Beyond RAID technology lets you expand on the fly and mix and match drives. And I've done this to upgrade my Drobo, I think, four times already. Simple. The colored lights on the front of the Drobo communicate status. It's fast. It supports Thunderbolt, Gigabit, and USB 3.0 connections. The connection is very per model, of course. It has an SSD hot cache, accelerating the database, and small file reads. Visit drobo.com slash twit to learn more and check out their complete line of products. And when you use the code TWIT100, you'll save $100 off the purchase of a Drobo Mini, Drobo 4Bay, or Drobo 5N. That's drobo.com slash twit and use the code TWIT100. We thank Drobo for their support. So Foible asks, what are the advantages of Piwik, uh, Piwik, sorry, in regards to privacy for web hosts as well as the users compared to Google Analytics? I think we've kind of got, gotten to that a little bit, but why don't you fill out the answer again? Yes, so... Um, uh, the, okay, so Piwik is an open source software, so free software under GPL license. So you have this freedom to study the source code and see how it's made, how everything, is, the data is manipulated and stored. And so this is one of the nice things. Um, then you also have, it's a decentralized platform, so you only have control over your data, I mean, access to it. We as the makers of the software cannot see any data of Pewik users worldwide. So, this is one more, let's say, built-in privacy advantage. In terms of features, um, we have from yeah, very early days implemented this IP anonymization. So as you know, users on the internet are um, identified with an IP address, which is a series of numbers. And uh, IP anonymization means that we blank out the last few numbers, for example. And by default, we blank out two of the four numbers for IPv4. And um, so this improved the privacy because you cannot see um, this over time. And there are all other features such as the opt-out. So you can include a little code on your somewhere on your website and this will let your users uh, opt out from being tracked so that they, yeah, to respect their privacy, their choices. It's a, it's a legal requirement in many countries. Um, um, as well as that, we have the ability to delete the data that is older than a certain date. So, you know, often the cloud providers or service providers, they like to keep the data as long as possible because oh, it may be useful in the future. Um, but this can cause yeah, some privacy issues because then you can accumulate like years of data about people and their activities and um, all these things. And yeah, with PWIC, you can in a few clicks um, delete the historical data and protect the privacy. You know, if you really care about privacy, like uh, in some countries, like in Germany, 
we have many users, companies that delete the data, all of the data. I mean, okay, mm, all of the raw user data uh, after, mm -hmm. for 12 months, and they keep the report aggregated data so they can still view the historical stats. Um, nice, privacy. nice. I think I forgot one privacy feature. Um, okay, uh, they go to the website and find out. We've got much more questions, and I want to make sure we get through all of them there. Uh, Web0904 is an anonymous uh, uh, chatter. You can always change your name in the web chat, guys. Uh, does it track web users in real time, or is it delayed? Can I see how many people are on a page currently? Yes, it tracks people in real time. By default, everything is, is real time, as in um, the data is collected and you can view it. Um, there are only a few reports within the user interface which are actually refreshing automatically. Um, and yeah, to uh, answer the second question, we do not yet have this uh, report that says, oh, there are 10 people reading this page right now. Uh, we do have reports like, oh, you have this many users on your website right now, or we also have this real-time widget that shows all of the last users uh, in real time as they arrive on your website. And you, you can see all the pages they were looking at or where they come from if it's their first page view. And um, yeah, real-time reporting is really kind of awesome feature. It's like cool to look at and you can put it full screen and let it there and look at your people, yeah, your users in real time. And um, then there is the all of the reports, right? The table reports, the graphs, and everything. And this is also processed by default in real time, and the data is then you know cached and um, yeah. So it's reprocessed, for example, every few minutes um, to make the application faster. Uh, but um, real time is. Um, yeah, I could go on, but really. Yeah. <laughs> I still got about six more questions to get through. We've only got another 10 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, Rourke's in the chat room says, uh, 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 can it be used from server side and process like Apache web logs, or does it have to be used from the JavaScript side? No, so this is really good question. Uh, thanks for asking. And really, this is, mm, this is about our vision. You know, we are building this analytics platform that lets you collect data. And right now we are, let's say, doing a good job or very good job sometimes at website analytics and mobile app analytics. So by default, you use a JavaScript tag on your website. In the mobile apps, you would use the Android SDK or iOS SDK to measure your mobile users. Now, there are also loads of other data sources, uh, for example, server logs. And um, there are dozens of types of server logs out there. And we have built actually uh, log analytics. So it's one of our big features is um, a tool that lets you import very efficiently um, um, logs from your servers and we support loads of different types of logs and you can basically import any log that contain a user activity you know people and what they are doing somewhere um, or machines and what they are doing and so check out uh, log analytics for pweek and you can import all your server logs for most popular servers built in by default it's very fast we have um, clients and loads of users who are importing gigabytes of logs. Um, if you guys are familiar with the old tools like um, AW Stats or Webalyzer, the very first, you know, server log analytics um, reporting tools, then for sure we built PWIC to be the modern version of those tools. So log nice. analytics. Uh, one of our key things and uh, many people use it and yeah, it's super useful. And uh, related to that, but I think you, you might have already answered this, uh, Foible asked, did P does PeeWeek gather any data if scripts are disabled? Probably not. By default, no, but you, yeah, there's a FAQ on our website. There are, I think, almost 300 FAQs now. And uh, we document, you know, everything. And this is one of the things, like, how do I track 
users that do not have JavaScript enabled. And you can add the no script tag. And um, yeah, so you can use PVK in JavaScript, you know, to track data. You can use server logs or this SDK for mobiles, but you can also use a simple image tag that you can include in like emails even uh, to track email uh, open rates, this kind of things. And yeah, you can include this image tag in your signatures in some forums. And um, you can also include it in the no script to track people without JavaScript. Very cool, very cool. I, I didn't even think of image tags, but you're right. That would be another way of tracking that. M. McCune asks, I assume that basic software is free. Is there a paid level? And what extras does it offer? And I bet that means you get to bring up your whole professional side. Yes. Um, so for, for many years, there was, there were, we had a few partners. Um, and we decided to create a very strong um, PWIC cloud service. And the idea is that, yeah, you can just look up PWIC Cloud or go to PWIC.org, click on the cloud. Um, and in a few minutes, you can get a free trial. And this gives you access to your own PWIC. So every client has their own full copy of, of their own PWIC. And um, yeah, I think it starts at um, $30 a month at the moment and um, it comes even with a few premium features that we are building premium features for our clients um, and it's working really well and it's fast and um, um, it's recommended if you don't know how to set up servers and or want to handle that because everything is handled right that's the advantage of cloud is that a company it's taking care for you of backups and monitoring and making the service performant and always up. And um, the advantage of PeeWeek Cloud, as opposed to many you know cloud services, is that you can ask for a copy of the database and later on you know migrate your data somewhere else if you. Uh, yeah, so you are, our goal is to help people liberate their data. And so even our cloud service shows that you can leave and host your data yourself later on. No problem. Uh, we know you, uh, you have a very broad view in your roadmap for this project, and it's been going on for a while. And in fact, I've been chatting with people in the uh, chat room about that uh, fact right now. Uh, but do you have anything in mind for like, I don't know, the, the uh, next five years? So where do you see people going? Yeah, so really this, uh, what we are doing at the moment is trying to build a great business as well, because realistically, um, we need a strong business, a strong company behind the project to invest more in research and development. I mean, we are competing with like, um, you know, Google, Adobe, IBM, and uh, new amazing companies like New Relic. And these guys, you know, they have dozens of engineers working on, on the analytics project. And really, we are just so small compared to, to them. And um, mm, so, yeah, how to make the vision happen is that uh, we are really trying to build a strong business so we can hire more talented engineers. And at the same time, um, we want to enable the community to help us because really we, you know, like every open source project, we need help and um, we get a lot of help from our users. And um, what is our vision? What do we want to achieve? Uh, for the first many years, our vision was to provide an open source alternative to Google Analytics. And this was really our driving force, and we were focused on that. And so we were going feature after feature that was really important and useful. And then probably about two, three years ago, we, we had this clear insight that you know, analytics was much more than just website. And 
for example, mobile apps was becoming the next big thing. But really, really um, there is so much generating data, so many devices, tools, software, and things generating data. And people will need a way to collect all of this data in ideally in a kind of centralized way that is easy to, to manage and that they keep control. And this means a few things, right? It means that people have all kinds of needs and ideas of things they want to do with, with Peewee. And um, what, so this is a really cool, but at the same time, when you're managing a project and you know, you get basically hundreds of requests about different things that make sense, you know, that are good ideas. And um, we figured that the scalable way was to build a platform, a platform that gets people excited and they can create and innovate um, or hopefully pay someone, an expert to do it for them and create it as a plugin. And so we have, our vision is basically to create this platform and then um, engage the community and people to create cool stuff on top of it. Uh, and at the same time, we will do our best to, you know, really keep growing the team and um, yeah, continue to innovate. Uh, the future is that we are focused on delivering a great experience for website analytics and mobile app analytics. And this will stay our focus. So, you know, making things stable, making things fast and documented and um, usable. We are also doing accessibility work, you know, testing the app for blind users or other kind of disabilities, checking it works well. Um, we are, um, and yeah, one of, and you said five years, so five years is a lot. <laughs> but, uh, okay. You don't have to worry about the five years. And, and in fact, yeah, I, no, I, I, I <laughs> because what I think is that and uh, what also some other people are saying is about the Internet of Things. Um, I see that you also interviewed um, Open Hub, uh, I think, person, which is kind of related. And this is um, really interesting for me. I think it's, it's going to obviously get really big. And you, we will have all these millions of sensors all over the place connected to the internet. So this is like, at the same time, a quite weird thing, like futuristic, uh, weird thing. And at the same time, very exciting. If you can like really get amazing value out of this, um, it's obvious the many use cases that there are in cities, in homes, in factories and all these things. Just- yeah, you know, uh, I'm sorry, um, you mentioned like internet of, internet of things, right? Uh, are, you, are you also planning on doing something like offline in this case? Because uh, uh, if you have like an internal, uh, an intra LAN or maybe like a, um, uh, I don't know, like a, uh, uh, a point of sale system, uh, would PWIC work on something like that? You know, give you local analytics instead of, yeah, um, you know, something like a website? So for, for this, we'd need to set up PWIC on this uh, in object or point of sale. Or, and um, people have set up PeeWeek on um, Raspberry Pi, for example, and this kind of like small computers. And um, it's a case of, yes, I, I being able to run PeeWeek on this device. But uh, what is even happening is that the Internet of Things devices, many of them seem to be connected to the Internet. And often it's like um, they wake up and send the data and then fall back to sleep. And so they, in the meantime, store the data locally on the device. And then every so often they send it uh, as a bulk request and import it into the platform. So there, there, there could be two models, right? You could use um, PeeWeek and collect the data on your device, but it needs to have some kind of power and uh, you know, a, a computer, even if a small computer. Um, uh, to run the database and uh, to make it 
fast enough that it's actually usable. Um, and alternatively, you could have a centralized Buick and have your devices connect to the internet from time to time and send the data uh, in the centralized. We also, for example, have a user, like a client actually of Buick Pro. Um, one of our clients is um, a ship company and they have ships going all around the world and each of those big ship is collecting a lot of data about the ship internals and all things. And they have their, each uh, ship has their own PWIC server where they can see the data of the local boat. And then they, every time the internet is here, they send all of it to a centralized server that lets you see a dashboard of all the boats around the world and where they are and um, what they've been doing and all these things. So, yeah. Um, so, with the number of cruises I've done, I've probably been on one of those boats. So, I'm, I've been tracked by Peewick already. Nice. <laughs> cool, cool. Hey, uh, we're almost out yeah. of time. So, I uh, um, just want to hit a few more points oh, before really? we go away. Yeah, we're almost out of time, believe it or not. Um, so, uh, uh, obviously, the Peewick company has a, a big stake and a big say in the f direction of the Peewick platform, but do you also have any kind of outside like committee that helps steer this or you just be responsive to your customers or how does that work? Well, it's, um, it may happen in the future, but the reality is that so far, all of the people working, um, let's say part-time or more full-time are all Peewick Pro employees. And um, so, being the CTO of the company, being also myself product owner of Peewick, um, it happens that at the moment Peewick Pro is managing uh, all of Peewick. But um, we are just really looking to open to any partnership. If companies are interested in being involved in Peewick development, you know, we would find ways to make it happen for sure. Uh, and I would love if a business was, you know, able to put people full time or part time um, working on Peewick, and this would be amazing. And it just hasn't happened. It has happened actually. Mayflower in Germany and some other have put people, um, you know, part time or full time for a while, but uh, it's not something like happening a lot, like with other projects like OpenStack or huge popular projects that have this amazing uh, community of companies actually um, building the... So um, I would say maybe let's meet again in five years and by then things may be different, but um, yeah. Well, it's, it's clearly the core of it's under an open source license. What license is that? Yes, it's the GPL license and it's very important for us to keep the, to make the Peewick uh, community project. It is a community project. Our roadmap is public. Everything is public. We do code reviews publicly. Um, we take feedback from users. You know, most of our tickets, of the things we work on, were issues created by users, right? Um, um, it is a full open source project, um, and. Um, you asked about the license, uh, GPL license. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if I answered the question. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, now, I, I got to ask a tough question, which is, um, if Google came along and wrote a big enough check, were, are you more committed to your open source standards or are you more committed to finding an exit strategy? Huh, so this is a very good question. And um, it's for me as the founder of week uh, very important to make sure that um, the essence of the project our principles our mission our values are um, you know maintained and up upholded uh, by the company and we are very cautious about this and um, you know for example the P week trademark um, and the domain name are you know, manage by myself and not directly the company. So, you know, um, in the case of a company wanting to later do something like this with Peewick Pro, they wouldn't be able to easily, you know, destroy the community and the project. It, um, 
but you know this will not happen um, well yeah. it's it's a very tricky question and something I've been thinking a lot lately about talking to a lot of people as well um, and other open source businesses and um, there are so many ways to do it and uh, it's it's about really the principles and how to keep um, the project thriving from a community point of view as well as building a thriving business um, and have a synergy that both are growing uh, at the same time and they need each other and they are stronger together and you know uh, we, we saw what happened with MySQL, right? When um, uh, Oracle uh, purchased them, they had to fork and create a new project called MayaDB and hire many of the top engineers that were working on that. I mean, it's uh, um, when these things happen, it's really disruptive and um, there are many cases where other things happened uh, with uh, yeah, and we just uh, want to make sure that this will, that PWIC will help people liberate their data forever. And uh, the license is, of course, the, the first uh, security, right? That's um, the GPL yeah. license. Um, well, that's a, that's a very noble stand. I appreciate it. You, have, you clearly have a lot of uh, enthusiasm for the project, and, and your philosophy is, is second to none, so I appreciate that. Um, uh, I have just a couple more questions here. Um, uh, is there anything, we, like I so said, we're almost out of time. Is there anything we didn't ask that you want to make sure our audience is aware of? It was really, yeah, complete, <laughs> I thought, and... Um, no, really, what I can say is if you are interested in, you know, measuring what you are doing, uh, whether your website, your mobile apps, maybe even measure new things, uh, new devices, new cool use cases, then get in touch with us and, um, yeah, in general, tr give PeeWeek a try and um, tell your friend if you like it and share your feedback and hope to, yeah, See you soon uh, in the community. That's really my message. Um, if we could grow and get more people on board um, to to keep doing that for the next years and really yeah delight users and help them keep control, then it would be just exciting and awesome. I have uh, two brief questions I have to ask you, and also because that's part of our uh, standard uh, litany for things at the end of the show. What's your favorite text editor? Text editor. I on the servers I use Nano, yeah, and okay. on Ubuntu I use Gedit. But really, I work mostly within the IDE. So mm -hmm. when programming, you know, use the modern IDEs. Yep. And, and uh, what's your favorite? Uh, script? Uh, sorry. What's your favorite scripting language? Uh, I would say PHP because that's. Um, yeah, it's also a good scripting language, although not the best, but um, I'm just um, experienced in this one, let's say so. Yes, yes, of course. Of course. All right. Well, someday somebody will say Perl again, but not today, I guess. Okay. Hey, uh, this has been a great show. We even ran over it just a little bit, but uh, I have a sort of a soft out limit anyway. Uh, thank you for coming on the show and talking to us about Pewick. Thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. And um, yeah, all the best for the future and uh, have a nice day. The sun has just come up here in Wellington. Maybe I can. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. oh. Watch the video. You'll, you're missing it if you're not watching yeah. the video. Oh, that looks beautiful. <coughs> I see sheep. I see sheep, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be sheep there somewhere. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Matayo. That's very, uh, uh, very, very, very cool. Uh, Guillermo, what do you think? Uh, well, you know, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, Matthew really, really got me excited about uh, Pewick. He, he, you can tell he really likes this project. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to try it on my server. I already have a server there. It's only running like two things. So I might as well just stick it in there and see what happens. Yeah, I, this this was this is a project that it wasn't even anywhere on my radar. And like like I said, this almost all the projects in the last uh, 
must be like six years, <laughs> have come to me by you, the audience, listening and uh, bringing on your projects that you want to have on this show. So or this was one of the many that are like that. And all of a sudden, it's something I know about, and I can talk to my clients about it, and I can research it myself, maybe even uh, install it on a couple of servers I might have access to. And this, this is, that's what's the great thing about this show is I keep finding out now 366 different things I didn't know before, at least, So and many, many things within each one of those. Like I said, we're almost we're a little over time, so I want to start wrapping up. Any, anything else, Guillermo, before I wrap up? Uh, I guess people can just follow me on uh, Twitter. That's at G-A-M-A-R-A-L. And uh, Google mm -hmm. my name. You'll find my YouTube videos. That's it. Okay. Well, let's uh, talk about upcoming guests. It's still pretty much the same list as last week. Next week's going to be Tulip, which is Application Lifecycle Management. Then the last show of the year is Bridge Designer and Contest. My friend Stephen Resler, who's been on a couple of the Insight Cruises, is a, a professional uh, designer, teaches designing for the, uh, I think, the Navy School or something like that. But he's uh, he's got a project where he gets kids involved with uh, bridge designs by providing open source software to do that. Really, really cool. And he'll be coming on. I hope we're going to demonstrate crashing a bridge by reducing one of the things there, pretty, pretty, pretty good thing there. Um, then, uh, beginning of the year, early in the year, we have Book Type, which is a book publishing system from author to maintainers all the way through. Open Unison, which is identity management. Open AV Productions, which is a musical synthesizer and performance engine. And uh, not quite scheduled, but I know it's just a matter of one more email. Is a Muse Score, a professional music typesetting. Uh, that all sounds really, really exciting. We're still looking for more guests for Q1. You can see our progress by going to twit.tv/floss, and uh, linked from there is the big spreadsheet. Says look at our upcoming guests. Again, I can always use more guests, always use more guests. So if there's people we aren't bringing on that you want to hear, the way to make that work is you email the community coordinator or the project leader and have them email me, Merlin at Stonehenge.com. My address is right there on the Twit homepage. Uh, we're still filming for Q1. We had a live stream, a very lively live stream today. Well, that was crazy, huh, Guillermo? It's like a lot oh, of Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was uh, exciting. We tape normally at 8 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays, uh, that's West Coast time in the U.S., at live.twit.tv, and you can join in on future shows. You can follow us at Floss Weekly on Google+, and those are tweeted automatically over to at Floss Weekly on Twitter. You can follow me as Randall L. Schwartz on Google+, and that's where I source all my material, uh, but it gets tweeted over uh, to Twitter and also uh, linked over in Facebook, so you can link, see me, all those places. Uh, what I want to plug is I'm going to be on a cruise in early January out to the Western Caribbean out of Fort Lauderdale. That means I will not be hosting the show, but never fear, we do have hosts lined up. Uh, I'm thinking even co-hosts lined up, maybe not. But uh, now we're just looking for the guests. Um, so we're hopefully filling those real, real soon. Uh, I'll be speaking at scale at, towards the end of January. I'll be giving my Dart talk, an, um, uh, introduction, brief introduction to Dart. That'll be in Pasadena for those of you in the greater Los Angeles area. Please come up and see me there. Uh, oh, by the way, um, if we haven't signed up yet for scale, you get 50% off by using the code F-L-O-S-S. -S. Um, um, Gareth always promises that code will work, so you can do that and save a little bit of money. Uh, I don't really have anything else to plug. Uh, you already plugged your stuff, Guillermo. So uh, without further ado, uh, Guillermo, thanks one, once again for stepping up to be my co-host for today's show. No problem, man. I'll also be at scale, by the way. So I'll, I'll be giving a, a talk on um, uh, game consoles. That's cool. It. Cool, cool. All right. All right. Well, we'll see you all again next week on Floss Weekly. <laughs>